Okay, good stuff. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Manuel, and um, I help people and systems work better together. That's pretty much it. Um, that sometimes goes by way of software engineering, sometimes the woo-woo stuff. I love woo-woo stuff. And it's funny that people said, oh, there's, there's going to be um, a tech talk and one that is more about team management. I'm like, wait a minute, how is team management working together, not technology? Collaboration is perhaps the keystone technology that separates us from the Mark 1.8, right? So I think that it's a good idea to have a, at least a somewhat systematic approach to uh, working as a team and to see what that means. So how do you think the unthinkable? Or let me articulate this a little better. How do you think the unthinkable? With an iceberg. Um, so how do you think the unthinkable, the Titanic, iceberg? Kind of <laughs> shit, I had to explain it. That, that didn't work. Um, so look, modern agile, the stuff I'm about to talk to you about, it's not rocket science. It's not a framework you can buy. It's not something that you implement. It's not even a certification, <laughs> heavens forbid. What I like to think of it as a guidance system for whatever agile practices we actually deploy uh, in the field. And uh, why is safety important? Shall we ask Google? I mean, no, no re really ask Google. They, they study this stuff. They made this little study of a thousand teams. Holy shit. A thousand teams. Trying to answer the obvious question. What makes a good one? You know, they're Google. You expect number of PhDs per square foot or whatever. That's not how it worked out. Psychological safety by a landslide. And when I say a landslide, it's like four times as relevant as the next one over. So it's not even funny how crucially important this become. And do you see the little rework logo at the bottom? Very interesting uh, site to, to look at. So what is this psychological safety thing? It's um, interpersonal risks. I'm standing here in front of you and I'm saying, safety is really fucking important. You guys say, he's an idiot. <laughs> Come on, get this guy out of here. Um, if I were to believe that, I would not feel very safe. So, I would probably not come up here and share, and you guys be drinking beer. Hmm. Well, okay. Maybe that would be a better idea, but... So, cool. Let's say, for argument's sake, that safety is good. What are you going to do about it? I mean, what does that mean, even? Little hint. They're at the bottom. So this is the non-framework, right? Why is safety important again? Because working is dangerous. We are risking our health. We are risking our livelihood our clients' money. We are risking our relationship with our colleagues. We are risking the livelihood of others 
that are in our ecosystem. And I don't think it's being very cavalier about it is, is a good idea. Because we're supposed to be making people awesome. You know, computer is a bicycle for the mind and stuff. Um, so we want to make people awesome. Who? Well, people who use our software, but people who work with us as well. A force multiplier. What could be cooler than a force multiplier in a team? The people who sell our stuff. Super salesmen. Who doesn't want to have a salesman that instead of going, oh shit, what did he sell this time? Um, <laughs> that just actually goes out and delivers the bacon and you get work that you can be proud of. You want to make that person awesome. You want them to promise that which will be delivered, that you, which you can deliver. And, you know, why are you hanging on to anything that you have done? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We were released at the end of the sprint. What? Wait a minute. Since, uh, anyone seen Scrum Guide, for instance? I don't even like Scrum very much. I'm a Scrum master, but... Um, <laughs> but you go, does anywhere in the guide say you release at the end of the sprint? You release when it's ready. Totally unrelated to the end of the sprint, incidentally. Why? Because risk management. Delivery over time risk goes up until suddenly there's delivery. And the risk dives to zero because it either worked or it didn't, but hey, it's no longer at risk, right? It's success, failure, whatever. Now you reset. Continuous delivery. Boink, 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 boink. Very small risk. No risk buildup, no risk aggregation. You are making it safe for your clients and for yourself by delivering continuously. It's about safety and respect for the people doing and ordering the work. And hey, guess what? We make mistakes. Shit blows up. <laughs> Shit doesn't work. That's okay. Why? Because there's only one of those little hops at risk. So you go, well, that didn't work. Okay, screw it, whatever. Roll back. Let's, let's do the next thing. When I was a kid, there was this magazine ad, which I really liked. It was a full page picture of the disc brake of a Porsche 911. Um, I was into racing and stuff. And um, it, it was just the disc brake with a caption, power is nothing without control. Now, if you want to be quick to deploy, and you want to be fearless in deploying, what do you need? Kick-ass rollback. <laughs> That's what will keep everyone safe and allow you to learn. And allow you to learn what doesn't work. Because in learning what doesn't work, you will get insight into what does. Oh, that a minute. I'm looking at this stuff and I'm going, this all looks very familiar, doesn't it? It's almost like something out of Toyota. Is this what we're thinking? Is this the Toyota production system? Two axes, respect and flow. You know, you have safety and making people awesome. 
That's the respect axis. This is respect for both clients and the people doing the work and for empowering and enabling for their value. Flow, that we continuously experiment rapidly, iterate. And because I do this agile stuff for a living, I have to have cool Japanese words because otherwise they, they just kick me out of the guild. So here we go, Anzen is preservation, safety. The first thing you do is a bit of anzeneering. You are about to carry out a bit of work, you ensure that it is safe. Kaizen, right there on the box, good change. So you've delivered, you've experimented, you're learning continuously. Stuff gets better, stuff gets worse. Oh, let's nudge it back to better. And uh, this is how you get somewhere. So let's talk about safety. We are addicted to what is called safety one, which is all about avoiding incidents. Ooh, no, downtime, crash, boom, bang, bad. Shall we try not to? And look, fair enough, right? I mean, no one's saying that downtime is good. No one's saying that catastrophic failure is good. But it encourages a certain type of thinking, what I call the causality credo, that, oh, it failed because of this. We even have a fancy word for it, root cause analysis. And you go, seriously? It's like, does any meaningful system fail because of one thing? <laughs> because if it did, seriously, fire architect. Um, oh, no, um, hire me. No, no, that's not it either. Um, you need to rethink your priorities. It also ignores everything that went right. For every incident, there's a heap of stuff that went exactly as it should have. But suddenly, it is a failure. Oh, goodness gracious me. My family's honor is in the mud. It assumes that you can take a system that failed and you can break it apart and, ah, yes, here's the database and here's the API and the load balancer. And do, do, does ever one thing fail in isolation? <laughs> Again, you should think about something else. And it assumes that function is bimodal. See, wow, I must know something. I'm using a very fancy word here, bimodal. Which is, it either works or it doesn't. Mode, on, off, working, broken. That's not how humans, companies, organizations work. They're, they work in degraded states. They work resiliently and recover from adverse circumstances. So this is a gross oversimplification. So let's talk about safety some more. Safety two, concept comes out of aviation. And um, it's about what we do every single day that keeps incidents from happening. It assumes that systems cannot be casually be decomposed because, uh, you know, your cache server and your API server and your database and your load balancer, <laughs> they don't work in isolation. And this is how you DDoS yourself, by the way. Uh, so it's, it, it may be worth considering that very frequently things only fail at the seams when they are working together. And um, that there are degrees of working. Sometimes 
your consistency is gone. You're serving the data of one hour ago. Does that matter? Well, it depends on the domain, right? Because if you're not showing a new color of a product, who gives a shit? If it's your bank balance, you may care. So there's variability involved. There's good and bad performance at similar technical points with different contexts of different meanings, which means that now you can protect and make safe what is worth protecting, what needs to be safe, and that which doesn't. Hey, you're a professional. You're not going to cock it up on purpose, I'm sure. <laughs> but where do you spend your money? And yeah, variabilities add super linear way. This little unforeseen thing plus this little unforeseen thing does not mean this much unforeseen. It very frequently means this much, that much, kaboom much. So, Let's talk about safety. Again, you can try to avoid failure, and that's, that's okay. There's, there's room for that. But mostly, I think, and what we mostly overlook in our industry is how to enable success. We break safety every day. A couple of examples. I mean, hey, you're a team player, you're evaluated individually. What? <laughs> Does this sound like a good idea to anyone? Uh, what are the incentives? Is there alignment here? You know, look, I'm not going to read this to you because you're perfectly capable of doing so and you've probably bitched about it at one time or another, about every single thing here. And then there's fuck-ups. They happen. They happen frequently. Who has made a big mistake today? Anyone? Coming here and listening to me, I'm sorry, <laughs> mate. Uh, <laughs> Anyone else? A, a, a mild one? Yeah, okay, a mild one. And look, the only person who doesn't make any mistakes is the one that's doing fuck all. Or doing something so trivial that, seriously, why have we not automated this? <laughs> but um, that's okay. Because people make mistakes. They're not dumb, they're not evil, they're not incompetent. Mistakes happen. <coughs> so, you have a good person in a bad situation. Any situation that leaves someone less than one safeguard away from an incident, that's an unsafe system right there. And this is what you need to look at. So, let's try to work safer. Simple, hey? Let's have a safer meeting. Because everyone loves meetings, right? It's the, the lifeblood of any organization. But really, are the people there encouraged to contribute. If you're very, very senior, or if someone made a catastrophic error and put you in front of a room full of people, um, and now they're stuck listening to you. The most powerful thing I could do is to take the opinion of someone who maybe 
on their experience that maybe they never got a room listening to them and say, okay, come here, next to me. This is Ms. X and this is the experience she's going to, 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 to recount. Because, you know, me? I'm an old white guy, the fuck do I know? Um, and you listen and you repeat back, did I understand this correctly? You avoid being a blowhard, difficult for me, but, and mostly you default to curiosity. Whenever you see something, mate, what are you smoking and can I have some? Um, whenever something hits you weird, <coughs> best possible reaction is curiosity. Like, oh, that, that sounds really, really fucking strange to me. Tell me more. Tell me why. Tailboarding. That's another one. When, when, so, Tailboarding, think of, of a truck, back of a truck has that, that little board that comes down so that you can take the cargo off. And imagine a bunch of guys, before they start work, they pop a cup of so, coffee on the tailboard and they're looking at the job site, at the thing they're gonna do. And, hey, okay, we're gonna do this, so, um, do we have the necessary experience to do this? Uh, are we pairing up to do it? What defensive measures do we have in place? If something goes wrong, what do we do? So you, you know that morning, uh, the so-called stand-up meeting, or the daily scrum, if you're a little more what did you do? What are you going to do? Whether any block? Oh, for fuck's sake, no. That, th th that's what it's for. Preparing collaboration, instituting safety. This is actually useful. You want a status meeting? Check Jira, for fuck's sake. Have a stop work authority card. This is so fantastic. I love it. It's insidious. Imagine going, you know what? I don't think this is a very good idea. There's a risk here. I don't like it. Guys, stop. Have we really thought about this? So this comes straight out of Toyota. And in the 70s, Toyota had a very serious quality problem. Their car sucked. So they installed this line from the beginning to the end of their assembly line. The Anzen cord. You pulled it and the line stopped. And this was the message. Anything that you see that strikes you wrong, you stop the line. 200 plus cord pulls a day. Imagine the gigantic cost of it. The sheer determination in the, the balls, ovaries, whatever you need to in a mass production setup Stop the line. I think there's something wrong here. Now they're world leaders in quality. Oh, fancy that. Blameless retrospectives. Yeah. Seriously, this is truly important because, you know, sometimes you go, what the 
what just happened here? Why? Why, oh God, why? But you know, no one's stupid. No one's evil. No one starts today with, <laughs> how am I gonna screw everything up? Except if you're me. But, um, the first step towards empathy is the belief that, no, 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 this, this was justified. There, there's something here. This was not random. So whoever that numpty was, they're right in some way. They did the best they could at the, under the circumstances. What were the circumstances? Why were they unsafe? Why did shit blow up? Sprint retro. It bewilders me. Because, you know, in cognitive psychology, uh, my, my wife is a double-barreled psych major. Um, it is shocking that eyewitness reports are admissible in court. Really, it just doesn't work. The degree of bias and detripation and, you know, well-meaning. This, this, this is not someone trying to lie. This is someone doing their best. But <laughs> it's so wrong that the time to see why something went cockeyed is now. It's not at the end of the day. It's not at the end of the sprint. It's now. So that doesn't make it a retrospect. That makes it an introspect on demand. Because then you can optimize for the one thing that's worth optimizing for, which is learning. Because learning makes you safe. And then the ultimate practice. Don't ask questions that you know the answers for or that you think that you know the answers for. Sure, there are heaps of questions here. The slides will be there. I, I like the last one. Systematically, I've done a bit of consulting here and there, and I get brought in because something went kabooey. And, uh, you know, I rock up to the ops guy or whatever, and uh, so um, for how long have you been screaming about this? And the answer is usually quite a while, because People working on the system know when the next incident is going to go down and why. They just don't feel safe in saying it. So yeah, that's pretty much it on safety. Questions. It's okay, it's safe. I won't bite. <laughs> I have a question. It's a Go simple ahead. one. Um, I sometimes uh, I notice that there's some problems also. I'm not, I'm not sure how to explain this, but um, you touch some matters uh, like uh, when failure is uh, when, when uh, bosses fear the failure of their systems and are quick to, to, to judge people. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure if, if this is a, also a factor that uh, maybe they're not thinking forward enough like on long, long term instead of short term, um, more on their team instead of just more portfolio increased. Yep, no, um, that's a very good point. 
And point three, structure and, and clarity. Um, so that's the thing, dependability, structure and clarity. The, in order to be able to think big picture, to you know, see the interactions, the bank shots, first you have to have a pretty decent knowledge of what the system tries to achieve. Then how components within it work, and then how your little bit of it plays into that whole. For this to work, uh, for someone who knows this structure, uh, imagine I have to convince people, or like investors or bosses, mm -hmm. that this is actually crucial, this scale. <laughs> well, um, you know, uh, I've worked a long time outside of Portugal, but I've also worked in Portugal. Um, and very frequently people say, well, this is too expensive. <laughs> and, um, you know, so, well, if you think good IT is expensive, when do you see bad IT and just how expensive that gets? Um, <laughs> and, you know, usually people don't believe me the first time around. Yes. That's fine. You know, <laughs> you know I'll wait. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I, I, I've got a, a bottle of water and a chair and good company. Uh, the, the, they'll come around, trust me, <laughs> because they will either learn or be extinct. Darwin is watching. <laughs> it's a bit of dark, dark sight to too many companies. Oh, yeah, because well, that's the thing. Respect flows both ways. I always try to respect the guy paying the bills. But I will not put myself in an untenable position whereby I am then not doing the bare minimum I would need to do to call myself a professional. It's the squirrel burger thing. You, you, you may be a great cook, but you can't take roadkill and do a nice burger from it. You will kill your customer. Let's try not to do that. <laughs> My pleasure, mate. I have a question. Go. Do you have any technique when you're in a team that already has their momentum? Yep. How can you steer the boat in the direction that is more aligned with those values? Well, there's one, there's one thing that I really like about retros. Um, wait a minute, there's something here? Yeah. Bugger. Here we go. Retros are fantastic tools because they, they get people to whinge. And when they whinge, you go, huh, again, this. If you do nothing else than sit on your retros and look at your action items and historically see what comes up again and again and again, Odds are, this is the guy that knows where the next incident is going to be. It's the elephant in the room. And how do you, a team has a cadence, has momentum, how to start steering towards safety, see what they worry about. See what they don't like to discuss. It's a bit like deploying, right? If it hurts, do it until it doesn't. So, yeah, repetition is your friend. It'll tell you what's not being fixed. <coughs> going once, going twice, I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs>